This is a mock interview conducted by Forum IS Academy at New Delhi. The interview panel includes eminent academicians, retired bureaucrats, and other luminaries. The objective of program is to acquaint the candidate with the format and expectations of the personality test conducted by UPSC. मैन्युफैक्चरिंग सेक्टर एंड सर्विस सेक्टर सर माई हॉबीज इंक्लूड प्लेइंग ऑनलाइन चेस एंड फ्री स्टाइल स्विमिंग करंटली यू आर एम्प्लॉयड इन बजाज ऑटो नो सर आई हैव वर्क इन बजाज ऑटो पोस्ट माई ग्रेजुएशन पोस्ट यूर ग्रेजुएशन वट वॉज यूर रोल इन बजाज ऑटो सर आई ब्रीफली वर्क एज ग्रेजुएट ट्रेनिंग इंजीनियर इन क्वालिटी कंट्रोल एंड इंजीनियरिंग डिपार्टमेंट माई रोल प्राइमरीली इंक्लूडेड इंश्योरिंग दैट दी बाइक्स विच आर मैनुफैक्चर्ड Uh, had no defects or till the time they uh, leave the campus what are the most uh, probable defects which uh, uh, bi- which bikes have so uh, the plant uh, in which i was uh, working is primarily an assembly plant so the most common uh, kind of defect was a uh, fitting and assembling defect uh, yes sir okay so you have done btech from in production industrial engineering from a very reputed institute so then why you want to join cpf Sorry, sir, I couldn't hear you. Why you want to join CAPF despite doing engineering from a very re- prestigious institute? Sir, uh, joining CAPF uh, was in the corner of my heart uh, from a very young age uh, because one of my uncles had joined um, CAPF when I was just nine or ten years old as an assistant one itself. So, sir, uh, it was there in my mind, and but I also wanted to explore other fields. I had an opportunity to graduate from NIT Kurukshetra, so I picked up the opportunities I had there. Uh, but then I finally committed to this course, sir. But among all CPFs, you are preferring CISF, right, sir. and given to the last priority to the ITBP. Why so? Sir, uh, while the choices are not very uh, rigid, uh, but uh, but keeping CISF as first preference is primarily based on my belief that CISF is the force of the future uh, because of the kind of mandate it has. Uh, it is involved in industrial security, uh, and 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 we. and uh, to to the to the uh, place where we are, we are uh, where we are moving like cyber security and data protection ultimately cisf will have a very uh, very broad role also sir my experience in industry uh, uh, keeps me at a place where i'm i'm more uh, aligned to the kind of duty cisf offers also sir keeping itbp as the last preference uh, was just a matter of choice i i did not have any concrete reasons but sir did high high terrain was one of the factors which i considered because i am i am primarily from the plains okay so, don't you think that without protecting the border can we protect our the critical infrastructure which is located inside no sir not at all uh, without without having proper internal security there cannot be any critical proper infrastructure proper border security yes sir border security in, uh, includes in, i mean uh without protecting border security we'll have no critical infrastructure in the first place so you said that uh, csf is the force of future so what is the future of itbp bsf and ssb uh, sir i meant it in the technical aspect because uh csf is more inclined towards industrial production uh, industrial protection and industries would frame the future of uh, india sir in the coming 20 30 years okay my last question to you is uh, what is the role of nsg so msg uh, is national security guard it is primarily an anti terrorist organization and it it works in the field of uh, counter terrorism primarily okay thank you okay prem can you tell me some forms of the destructive production technology and what does it mean sir uh, destructive production technology or say wax casting sorry sir production technology destructive production technology so i'm not able to recall right now sorry okay what is stereo lithography stereo lithography sorry sir i'm not able to recall i'll read up on it okay 
No problem. So, what is the role of the SSB? So, SSB is primarily mandated to uh, secure India's border with Nepal and Bhutan, uh, and it includes anti-smuggling and uh, and and um, and illegal migrations as well. Okay. What are the other ancillary part of the CRPF which are working with different name in the country in the different security scenario? So, uh, CRPF has uh, groups like Rapid Action Force, which is the quick action team of CRPF. Also, sir, it has uh, a quick uh, quick action team in Valley, which is operating in uh, insurgency uh, militancy uh, areas. Uh, sir, there is a Mahila Battalion with CRPF, which is uh, completely composed of uh, women officers and women jawans. Uh, also, sir, it has uh, organizations like uh, Parliament Duty Group, which is uh, protecting the outer cordon of the uh, of the uh, a parliament and uh, prime minister's home, uh, and sorry, sir, and has a special duty group which is uh, protecting the uh, outer cordon of the uh, prime minister's house. Cobra is also there. Yes, sir. Cobra is also there, Thanks. which is well known. Okay. What will be the use of your engineering or your subject into the force, sir? My familiarity with technology would help me. Uh, uh, Get uh, get technology get technology into the force to integrate technology better into the force. Uh, also, sir, my experience as uh, experience as uh, in the field of industry and data security would help me uh, integrate uh, cyber security into the force if and when time arises. Mm. What is three D printing and what is the future of that? So, three D printing is uh, basically printing uh, instead of manufacturing uh, using assembling, it is uh, printing through cyber uh, cyber methods. And the future is, sir, it is uh, under uh, under uh, research and development right now. It is not very feasible right now, but uh, as as and when it progresses, uh, we'll have uh, a lot of 3D printed materials uh, in near future. Okay. My last question is that, do you know the article under which the Armed Forces of India or CAPF have been allowed for the Union of India? Under which article they have been mentioned? Or the schedule? Sorry, sir, I'm not able to recall right now. Okay, who is the current chess champion? The current chess champion is Ding Lijian of China. Okay. And who is the famous chess champion of India? Uh, sir, uh, right now we have many famous chess uh, champions in India, but chess champion, I mean, only Vishwanathan Anand, sir. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Prem here from Patna and there is, uh, Patna is also associated with the curse of Buddha. Are you familiar? Oh, no ma'am, not familiar with it. Uh, Patna is prone to floods. Why? Ma'am, because Patna is, Patna and in general Bihar is crisscrossed criss -cross by a lot of rivers, uh, Ganga and its tributaries. And for example, Can you name the tributaries? Right ma'am. Uh, so for example ma'am, Kosi is also known as the Sora of Bihar because it is prone to floods. And then we have Mahanadi and Gandak and Budi Gandak. Uh, also, ma'am, we have Kamla Balan who, is, uh, who gets flooded, which gets fl uh, flooded every year. So, we have these two years, ma'am. Now, uh, you were working in ZS Associates. Right. So, ZS is a consulting firm. You were working as a consultant? I was working as data analyst, ma'am. As a data analyst. Okay. So, data analyst is also, uh, which, which coding language is used by a data analyst? Um, primarily, it depends. It also depends on the kind of work, but I used uh, Excel and R primarily uh, to analyze data. Otherwise, Python is also a very Python common also. language. Now, how come a shift from production and industrial engineering to data analyst, which primarily is a computer domain? Yes, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, primarily it involves uh, application of mine uh, in the uh, first place. But uh, when I worked in Bajaj, ma'am, I realized that uh, the manufacturing sector and assembly sector is saturated. Now, in the lower management, there is not much scope. And simultaneously, I got a job offer with ZS Associates, which is more rewarding for skills and um, and, and abilities, so I decided to switch to ZS, ma'am. So, uh, when you join the forces, there will be a better rewarding career somewhere else and you will leave? Ma'am, um, forces are a passion for me. Uh, so, I might not even get a better passion for myself. You've mentioned playing online chess and uh, not offline. Ma'am, offline chess requires a player with you. Uh, all the time and needs an ecosystem whereas online you can just get switch on the PC and switch on your even your phone yes ma'am even, even phone okay now um, my question is regarding research 
So you've done, you know, you've, you were awarded a research internship from South Korea, which seems to be very prestigious. But the overall, India's research capabilities are low. We do not have too many, too much research going on. And this has also been a question overall. So why? What are the challenges which are being faced? I'm currently, uh, research and development field is facing challenges and it is, it is not very high. But when compared to our GDP and our situation, it's not very low either. Uh, because we are we are improving them. Um, uh, recently, we had a QS world ranking where uh, many Indian institutes are there in 500, uh, which used to be missing a few earlier a few years ago. Uh, but my challenges primarily uh, include uh, spending, government spending, and then because uh, we do not have a lot of ex international exposure currently, uh, it also reduces our uh, our scope. And also, my brain drain is one factor which which causes a lot of talent from India going outside to uh, to look for better scope. I think uh, the reason, one of the reasons for brain drain is a vicious cycle. It's also because research is low. Now coming to the next question on the same line of thought is, I understand that research is picking up and it's happening. However, we see that innovation, we see a lot of startups are coming up or even from IITs, there is a lot of innovation happening. However, the commercial, for an innovative product to reach the commercial stage and be commercially viable is not happening. So what are the government measures in this regard? Ma'am, we have a lot of schemes running in education sector. For example, we have recently have NEP, National Education Policy, which is trying to bring in multidisciplinarity in the uh, education sector, which would also allow uh, the the entrepreneurs, the engineers or the entrepreneurs to look more uh, broadly about not just the technology, but the viability of it as well. How does NEP contribute to viability uh, to making your product? A product is ready in the lab. You've innovated, you've done a lot of research and created a product. Now, what is, how will NEP contribute to making this product viable commercially? Uh, because uh, the, the reason why we already have the product in the lab, developed in the lab and we do not have uh, it's, it's future marketing opportunities is because at the time of development, its viability was not thought of. But when we have multidisciplinarity, like for example, ma'am, my field, my uh, engineering field had a subject called value engineering, which, which uh, taught us to have a viability component right at the time of uh, developing a, a technology. So ma'am, things like this would allow engineers or entrepreneurs in the first place to have uh, this. Could, could funding be a bigger problem? And apart funding, from apart from just uh, the viability at the formulation stage itself, don't you think funding is a problem? Man, funding is also a problem because enough testing is not done uh, before we we finally have a product in the market. Okay. Now uh, again a question, which is NEP is for which years of education? Man, starting from uh, three to. Uh, to class 12th education. And we're talking about innovation, which is in college. Um, NEP also includes uh, 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 education policies for the graduation stages as well. Okay, okay. Can you tell me what is artificial intelligence? Um, artificial intelligence is uh, uh, an emerging technology which uh, uses the learning capacity of the machines to, to uh, enable them to give better results uh, for the humans. Okay. And what is the application of artificial intelligence pros and cons in uh, dealing with security challenges? Ma'am, artificial intelligence would uh, enable the forces to, to have better view of the security challenges that they're having. For example, uh, we can use, we are already using uh, automated drones which are working on AI. Uh, but also ma'am, it would have a lot of, it would give a lot of challenges. For example, uh, the cyber security would be a would be a domain which would be highly hit by artificial intelligence. And we are seeing uh, it in the rising number of financial frauds that we are having. Uh, but ma'am, I think at the end, uh, it, uh, it, it, would, it would help force, force us better enable, better prepare themselves for the challenges. Okay. Um, last question. What is the motto of CISF? Um, CISF motto says uh, protection and security. And uh, who's heading CISF? I'm not aware of the name right now. Thank you. Thank you.